in chapter number 4 you know the weightage the weightage is pretty simple can be up to 15 marks some day it will be if it's your good day i will always mention like that if it's your good day you will get that 14 marks questions from there 14 to 15 marks now first thing you should know is si what is si symbol interest do you know the formula of symbol interest yes vinisha ptr percentage that is the first formula you should remember before that we should know the core formula what is the core formula amount is equal to principal plus interest in case of symbol interest this amount formula will become what the p plus ptr percentage we can always rewrite it as p into 1 plus tr percentage that is amount is that clear did we study any other formula from this no symbol interest we just studied two formulas and shortcut part and all you can refer the marathon few more some simple formulas are there like for the shortcut part but if you know this formula you can do any questions these two formulas if you know you can solve any question from symbol interest now you will be asking sir where is the formula for r will we find a separate formula for r no we will just use calculator when a is given p is given T is given we will use calculator and find the value of r how will you find p formula will be same itself we will just use calculator and find the value of p we will use calculator to find the value of t that is the easiest method rather than studying different different formulas then we are going to the next one that is ci what is the formula for compound interest p into 1 plus i the whole power n minus 1 people this is what this is what formula for effective rate of interest 1 plus i the whole raised to n minus 1 this is what formula for compound interest then we have amount formula amount formula is what the p into 1 plus i the whole power n now we will discuss about something called as our one second yes something called as compounding Whenever it is monthly compounding, what will happen? Monthly compounding means I will become what the R by how much percentage? Monthly compounding means R by 1200. Then N will become what the 12 into number of years. Okay. Yes. Then whenever it is like quarterly compounding, it is what I will become R by 400 then n will become what 4 into number of years when it is like half yearly compounding what happens now half yearly or what you will call another name for that is semi-annual compounding i will become what the r by 200 n will become what the 2t that means 2 into number of years always we want in what months or years years we want everything in years we don't want anything in Monks, because we are CA students, it takes years to get it qualified, right? Yes, think that way. Hey, hey, yo. Yes. Next one is, you know these two formulas. People, you know these two formulas. If you know these three formulas or four formulas, you can write the fifth formula of difference between CI and SI. What is the difference between CI and SI? Write this first. That is what the P into 1 plus I, the whole power in minus 1 then you write the formula for si that is what the minus ptr percentage when you rewrite it you can write it as p into 1 plus i the whole power eh? minus 1 minus tr percentage even if you don't know this formula it's completely all right you know the formula for ci you know the formula for si that means it is taken care is it now do you know the formula for depreciation Compounding is appreciation. Yes, getting compounded means it is getting increased or increment is happening. Why? It is getting depreciated scrap value. What is it the? Scrap value is equal to cost price. You can write it as cost price also, right? Or present value. Cost price or present value into 1 minus i the whole power n. That means 6 formulas are done. If you know this much, itself a lot of things are done. Now, 7th one, do you remember effective rate of interest? Uh, ERI is nothing but 1 plus I the whole power N minus 1 
If you want in percentage, multiply it with 100. That much is done. And then next part is. Eighth one. What is the next formula we study? Hmm? Then we are going towards annuity. Depreciation is done. Then our compounding is done. Simple interest is done. The amount, everything is done. Now we are going to the main part that is annuity. Now, one of the most difficult part in this topic is uh, in annuity is the first difficult part is judging. Yes, with your judgy eyes, we are going to judge annuity. Now, people, how will you judge an annuity? If it is annuity regular or annuity ordinary, ordinary I'll mention, ordinary, that means the amount is paid at the beginning of the year or the end of the year, da? end of the period, end of the period or it will be like it will not be mentioned at all, nothing will be mentioned, nothing will be mentioned regarding end, beginning or whatever it is, it will not be mentioned. So, we will take what? Ordinary annuity or annuity regular. Then coming to the annuity due part, annuity due or annuity immediate yes now in annuity due the payment is done at the beginning of the year or end of the year beginning, beginning of the period now from today from today means annuity due or annuity immediate both are same only annuity due and annuity immediate yes that means from today from today from this day from this day then, from this morning, you can expect all these things you can expect this morning, today morning, today evening, everything will come under what the annuity due, whichever is paid at beginning, beginning of the period is called as what? Our annuity due or annuity immediate. Now, here, how many formulas are there for us? We only have mainly one basic formula is there, the core formula that is future value is equal to what the present value into 1 plus i the whole power. This is to be known because we already know a is equal to what the p into 1 plus i the whole power. N. Instead of p, we are writing present value. Instead of amount, we are writing future accumulated value. Okay. Now, Towards the end, I will be discussing how to judge the question whether it is based on compound interest or it is based on annuity. That also we will discuss now. Now, future value. What is future value? Future value is nothing but the accumulated amount. We are creating wealth. That means in the for the future, we are investing some money regularly so that we are creating a wealth in the future. That is called as future value. That is the basic meaning of future value. Then what is present value? What was present value? We already took the loan or we borrowed it. Right now we got some money and we are paying that money back. That is called as what the present value. Never forget that. Loan. Loan. Borrowed. Then anything else? Mainly whatever you are borrowing or taking a loan, whatever lease. value you took or lease. Everything will come under what the present value. Yes. Which one the purchase of machinery? Actually, we should take in, in a different way. Investment decision is there. That is a different thing that we will discuss. The lease and that part we will discuss over there. Now, first of all, present value means if it is in a question, it is mentioned you took a loan of one lakh. That one lakh is what present value. Then another question it is told that you are investing thousand regularly. To accumulate some money in the future. That money is called as what? Uh, you are creating a wealth. That wealth is called as what? Future value. Now we know future value for annuity regular. What is the formula that, for that? A by I into 1 plus I. The whole power N minus 1. Then future value for annuity due or annuity immediate is what? Uh, A by I into 1 plus I. The whole power N minus 1 into 1 plus I. That much is required. Why? Extra term is what the 1 plus i is the extra term that you require. Now, 
coming to the present value part we have gt method do you have do you remember gt method whoever knows or whoever has a gt calculator you can they can use gt method gt method was what the usually present value is nothing but annuity into gt factor yes if you ask me that is the case annuity into gt factor is present value of annuity regular if it is annuity due one plus i term also will come into the picture how to find this gt factor if 10 percentage is the rate then number of years is 10 then uh, that's all that's all we require now how to find this first you will type 1.1 since it is 10 percentage you will type what the 1.1 on your calculator then you will click what divide then equal to how many times 10 times number of years times then you will click what gt button then if you multi till here it is the gt factor if you multiply it with a you are getting the present value of annuity regular now if you are multiplying it with one plus a term again that is called as present value of annuity due okay yes so till here till here it is present value of annuity regular this entire part is called as present value of annuity due including that one plus i part okay now without formula how will you find present value of without gt method how will you find we can use the present value formula that is future value divided by one plus i the whole parent either this formula you can use if you know the future value formula or you can write it as a by i into 1 minus 1 plus i the whole power minus n this way you can remember if you cannot remember this formula what you will do da? you find future value then divide it by 1 plus i the whole raised to n anyway in calculator it doesn't take much time within few minutes you will get the answer few minutes means literally few minutes one or two minutes you will get the answer which one da? yes okay then what if it is annuity due pv of annuity due you can multiply the entire thing with what 1 minus i 1 1 plus i the whole power minus n then multiply it with 1 plus n. that's all you are getting the answer okay so that is present value and future value now people the major part yes how to judge the question is based on compound interest amount or future value of annuity amount how to do this how to judge people we are going to judge some people yes where is it yeah. now what is the basic thing in compound interest in compound interest you will be investing a certain sum of money at the beginning itself there is no regular in investment or regular installment you are not investing what are you doing in compound interest in compound interest what happens you you means what the whoever is the person even if, even if it is raj sham a person or whatever is that person we will play the character of that person yes always think that you are that person you are investing a sum for a single time that is the basic meaning right a single time investment will be there a principle will be there in the beginning then will you invest regularly? No, that will not happen in CI amount based question. While in our future value based question in annuity, annuity, what will happen? You are regularly investing, regularly investing or regularly paying. Anything can be done. So, how to judge whether the question is based on annuity or compound interest? basic thing is if a investment is already done in the past if the investment is already done and it is going to get matured into a huge value or an amount in the future that is a question based on compound interest based amount while future value annuity based question is what the 
it is like you are regularly investing emi is getting paid or sip is getting paid or you are paying regularly to a person that will accumulate to a wealth that is called as what the future value of future value based question from annuity that is the basic thing you should know if you know this this part is saved you can solve anything now next part is do you remember present value of perpetuity which is equal to a by i if it is growth if growth rate are involved what is the formula a divided by i minus g that means in the question growth rate will be given if growth rate is given you can use the second formula for that then net present value should always be greater than how much or equal to how much so that it is called as a good investment it should be greater than or equal to zero that is the case then if pv of purchasing is greater than present value of leasing or renting will you buy it or lease it you will lease because whichever is smaller you will do that that is the basic thing if pv of leasing is greater than pv of purchasing what will you do da purchase whichever is smaller you will do that that's the basic thing now the final part the final part is cagr before that we have the bond devaluation formula right bond devaluation formula now if you remember the bond devaluation formula the bond devaluation formula is same as whatever we learned till now yes ma'am i'll show you the formula in one minute yes yeah in bond devaluation formula what will happen is pv of bond present value of bond we are finding using our normal pv found using coupon payment plus par value par value divided by what the 1 plus i the whole par n this is the formula this pv formula is what a into a by i into 1 minus 1 plus i the whole par minus n plus par value divided by 1 plus i the whole par n now what is this i over here what is this i i is what the expected rate of return rate of return while a is what a is coupon payment that is what the par value into nominal rate nominal rate will be given in the question everything will be given in the question just substitute complicated questions won't come from this topic okay because it's this itself is complicated yes so another complicated question won't be there if they are asking a question based on this it will be way too direct now cagr what is the formula we remember usually we write 1 plus option raise to time period tn minus t0 is equal to vn by v0 if you look into it this option is nothing but what the cagr if you want to find cagr if cagr is given or not just use this formula if you know this much people i am telling you you can score everything from this